I forgot it says. Uh, what a weird week we've been having, yes? Yes. It definitely went by fast. All right, here's what we got going on. Listen up, please. Everybody's attention, Richard. Hey, a uh, couple of you guys uh, chatted me up or emailed me and said, hey, do I turn the homework on Teams? Do I bring the class? And I said, whatever's most convenient to you. Some of you turn it in on Teams. Some of you uh, said you're going to bring it. So that's fine. So I need everything you got. Everything you got. If you've already turned it on Teams, uh, Saturday is when I put e-learner stuff uh, in the grade book. So I will put that stuff in the grade book on tomorrow. For those of you that turn any of the stuff that was due this week, uh, in on teams because of the multiple days. You gonna pay attention now? Okay, thank you. Um, because of the multiple days that we had e learning, and there was confusion about well, do I bring it to class? Do I turn it on teams? Uh, we'll have a, a little bit of grace period to make sure we get our homework turned in. But if you physically have your homework, then Madison's coming around to uh, grab that. All right. Hey, I don't, I don't want to say I went off on them, but uh, we had a, a good uh, conversation, period one, my other seventh grade class. Hopefully you guys aren't the same one. Hey, I gave you just a few instructions for this chapter, Grace. What were they? For this entire chapter, I said, do this. Make a resource card? I said it would be smart. Listen up, please. I said it would be smart because there's so many formulas that you start making your resource card. I didn't say it was a requirement, but I said, I said, it'd be pretty smart if you actually start making your resource card so that it's not the last day and you're trying to scramble to figure out what are the 15 formulas or so that I need to remember. Uh, that was one thing. Uh, Laura was another thing I said for this chapter. I said, every day you need to, I said, every day you need to bring a calculator. And so what happened was is that in period one, I didn't have like two or three kids, which generally happens. I mean, I had half the class that showed up without a calculator, right? I, I, did, I don't make these numbers friendly enough that you can do all of the calculations in class without a calculator. I make it, these problems, knowing that you should have a calculator in your hand. So it felt like I was wasting the class time because they're trying to do a complicated calculation. Some kids have a calculator in their hands, some kids don't. So how many kids don't have a calculator right now? Okay, well that's better. I know, but I'm saying your, your job this entire chapter every single day is you show up to class with a calculator, okay? Well, I, I can't help that, right? But what I can do is give you reminders to do what you're supposed to do. So please bring your calculator. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but don't, right? Why am I? Why am I giving these reminders now? Because there's a quiz. Well, next week we're going to have a quiz. I didn't. I don't write the quiz with friendly numbers. I write the quiz knowing that you're going to have a calculator in your hand. So the radius or whatever we're doing today, we're doing circles. The radius isn't going to be two. I mean, two point six seven or something like that. Yes, you can still do it by hand. The issue is not in a timely manner. So I write the quiz, the test, knowing you have a calculator in your hand. Yeah, I can do it all by hand as well, too. I, I make probably the same mistakes you guys make when you do it by hand. But when I know I have a calculator in my hand, I can make a quiz that has 10 questions. Instead of, oh, they're doing it by hand, I better put four questions. No mercy. You're in seventh grade. You can come to class with what you're supposed to have. I, I don't say you have to have a resource card for class. I just say it'd be nice. Oh, by the way, on quiz day, you have to have a resource card. You're not going to remember all of these formulas come quiz day. Uh, when we get to test day, it's going to be double those formulas. Well, maybe not double, a third more formulas on, uh, on that test day. So please 
bring both of those every single day. And if it's a habit, then chances are you will do fine. All right, write down your homework. Uh, I will give away one free point of extra credit if you try number 16 and you get it right. So if you want to challenge, try number 16 along with one through 15, but try number 16 if you want one point. Uh, we won't be going over 16 in class on Monday. I will look at your homework and if you get it right, I'll give you a point of extra credit. No, this is easy. With a calculator, it's very easy. Yeah, and we have we've had a lot of reviews because of the the horrible weather week we had uh, to to have all those shapes pretty down solid. So you should be pretty confident about uh, the previous shapes. What? Can you move your head, please? I can't see. Okay. Hey. One thing when you're sitting in a class, right, and someone in front of you is in the way, the easiest thing to do is no, stand up. <laughs> okay. okay. And that way you don't disturb the class and you get the information. Now, if you're if I give a class and literally the entire class, right, you can't see the slides, then we'll then we need to address that. But if you just like one thing, don't just stand up, look. Because all it does is take you know, a solid 30 seconds for you to talk and then the kid doesn't understand. And then the kid goes, what, left, right, what? And then kids giggle and it's not efficient use. All right, everybody have it written down in your planners? All right, uh, just remember Boyd does uh, planner checks. So make sure you're using your planners. I know, but I'm just saying, it's, it's a good habit to be in, right? If I didn't have a planner, I would forget what I had to do when I would get home. I do an electronic one, but I'm saying if, if I don't put it in my planner, I will get home and all I will want to do is stuff other than what I'm supposed to be doing. When it's in my planner, then I know that, oh, I opened up my planner. What am I supposed to be doing? Oh, I got that crazy seventh grade math test I got to grade. And then I get it done. All right, here we go. Areas of circles. Uh, we've been doing nothing but polygons, triangles, quadrilaterals up to this point. Now we get to our one, I don't want to say weird shape because it's not weird, it's a circle, but it, and it's not a polygon. It's not made up of sides. It's only got one side, okay? All right, we, uh, we have got, we've had this uh, definition before, but I looked at the board. Uh, I said that a circle is the set, that means a collection, right? Of all the points that are the same distance away from a given point. So if I give you a point and put that point somewhere on the paper, let's say right there, and I take a ruler and I measure from the ruler a given distance, let's say 10 centimeters off to the right. So I measure 10 centimeters off to the right, and then I draw that point, and then I measure 10 centimeters off to the left and put that point, and I repeat that process, not twice, not three times or four times, but I repeat that process. 20 times. More than 20. 50 times. More than 50. An infinite amount of times. What shape do I get? A square. A square. Uh, you do not get a square. I get a circle. Okay. If I do four points, it certainly does look like I would get a square, right? And I would get a square, but I'm not doing it four times. I'm doing an infinite amount of times. So if I do it an infinite amount of times, here's the kicker. The shape that you get is what's in black. That curved circle, the shape right there is called a circle. A triangle? And, hey, it was the first time it was funny, not the second time. Okay, so I'll do it again. All right, so we got a circle. Now, yes, occasionally people like to color in their circles, but I want to point out that that colored shape right here is not the circle. The circle is the outside. Right? The circle doesn't include the insides. Okay, so the circle is just the black curve. Okay, uh, the whole thing's called a disc, right? But, um, but the circle itself is just the black portion. However, today we will be calculating the area of a circle. So remember, area is the amount of space that a shape encloses. So today we finally get to calculating, well, how much stuff is on the inside. That's the calculation we'll be doing today. Jake, you with me? Yes. Okay. Uh, also remember that we, we have a circle, the line that goes through the center is called the, called the diameter and half the diameter is the 
radius. Now we've done one calculation in previous chapter with circle, and that was the perimeter, right? We've talked about perimeter of polygons, right? Now we're going to talk about the perimeter. Well, we've already talked about the perimeter of a circle. Anybody remember the formula from three chapters ago? What do you got? Go ahead. What do you got? I think it's just the middle line times three point one four. Yeah, and that's called the Diameter. That's called the diameter. So we said it's just the middle thing times pi. That would be pi times the diameter. And that is the formula. So C for circumference, this is the perimeter, is equal. So do we need to write that down or do we have it memorized? Well, is Richard the only one that remembers it? I remember. Because remember, this chapter is about perimeter and area. It's also about volume as well, too. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Uh, it's about perimeter of a shape. Right, perimeter of a square is all four sides added up together. Perimeter of a circle will differ form of pi d. Okay, uh, there was a second one because two radii make a diameter. So instead of writing a d, I could write two times r. So these two formulas are the same formula. I like the middle one because you're going to find out that the area formula certainly looks a lot like this. So I like pi d. All right, so there's another one to add it to our formula of, sh uh, formula of shapes that we need to know. Now, granted, this was three chapters ago. The formula for today is for the area. So write this down, please. The area of a circle is equal to pi, which is 3.14, right? Pencil should be moving, right? Times the radius squared. Now, up until this point, every single time I gave you a formula, I said, hey, let me prove to you where the formula comes from. I didn't do it for this one. I just threw the formula and threw it in your face, right? There's a reason for this. It turns out for seventh graders, I can't prove it to you. I can show you a what's called a very rough proof, and it's not a very rigorous proof, and I'll show it to you at the end of class. It's not a proof. It's just an indication of why the formula is this. Well, you need calculus in order to do this, do this proof, right? And since we don't know calculus, then... I can't actually prove this to you. It's the only formula, by the way. Uh, it's a high level uh, amount, uh, branch of mathematics, right? It happens either senior year or you'll take it in college. Uh, it deals with um, uh, area, volume, uh, and uh, the slope of uh, a line. And only takes a thousand pages to teach it to you. All right. So everybody has it written down, right? Uh, by PEMDAS, what do we do first in this formula? By PEMDAS, what are we going to do first? Multiplication or squaring? Squaring. We've got to do squaring. Now, remember, we're going to be doing it with a calculator, but if you're doing it by hand or if you got that dollar calculator, the first thing you got to do is squaring. By the way, this doesn't mean times two. What does it mean? Times itself, times itself right? It's the base written two times. Not pi written twice, but r written twice or r times r. Yeah. Wait, if it were, if it were, um, uh, cube, would it be R times R, then that times R? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we will be using, if you have that dollar calculator, 3.14 for pi. If you're using the pi key, then remember you're going to be getting a slightly more accurate answer. You're not getting the real answer because even using the pi key, you're doing some rounding. All right. Okay. So it's not too hard of a formula to do. This is weird. Take your calculators, divide 22 by seven. Take your calculators, divide 22 by seven. I only had three people raise their hand that said they didn't have a calculator. Was it more than three? Because I'm looking at least five people that aren't doing anything right now. What do we get? 3.142871413. Did that round to 3.14? Yeah. Why in the world would I make my life challenging by using 22 over 7 when I can use 3.14? Okay. Why would you do that? It's a good question. So here's the answer. Some problem. Now, imagine we don't have calculators. We don't have calculators. Well, we're not going to type in pi on our paper. We're going to type in 3.14. Are you with me? Okay. There are some problems where the radius is a fraction. And when the radius is a fraction, it is much easier to multiply, not a decimal times a fraction, but a fraction with a fraction. You with me? If the radius is a fraction, 
use 22 sevenths. If the radius is not a fraction, use 3.14. We're talking about doing it by hand. If the radius is a fraction and you're squaring it, you're going to get another fraction. Then you got to multiply that times 3.14. Yeah, you want an extra step? Go for it. Right? Nothing wrong with what you said, but it adds an extra step. Okay? If I have a radius of a half, where'd my pen go? If I have a radius of a half, right, and I square a half, that means a half times a half, which is a half times a half. How do you multiply with fractions? So do it, not cross multiply. That's with a proportion. That's where a half is equal to three over six. That's cross multiplying an equal sign. What's a half times a half? Oh, by the way, this was what, two chapters ago? Why is it not one half? Because you're multiplying two times two. I'm multiplying straight across. One times one is one. two times two is four. when you square a half, you get one fourth. Now I got to multiply by 3.14, though that's ugly. If instead I'm multiplying by 22 over seven, much quicker done. Could you multiply that slightly easier than multiplying one fourth times 3.14? You can, but now you just add in an extra step, right? We don't like adding steps in math. We like doing things as easy as possible. So is everyone paying attention? Tonight for homework, if they give you a calculation and the radius is a fraction, don't multiply by 3.14, multiply by 22 over seven. It's easier, right? Say again? And I'm saying you can do that easily in your head, right? Can you multiply 3.14 times 0.25 in your head? She just did She just did it in her head. See you know what I mean? That's why 22 sevenths makes sense. It doesn't make sense if the radius is four. I'm just saying, listen carefully what I'm saying. If the radius is a, is a number, whole number, right? One, or it's a decimal, 1.2, then yeah, absolutely, use 3.14. Yeah. But if it's a fraction, don't mess, don't, it's just, too, it's extra work. When you add complexity to a problem, you just add in another chance of making a mistake. Because it's close to 3.14. I mean, by the way, when you did it on your calculator, you got 3.14 and some other decimals. You didn't get what pi was, but at least up to two decimal places, it's 3.14. All right, watch me do one. Uh, we got a circle, yes? Well, because it says so. Uh, radius or diameter? Everybody? Radius or diameter? Radius. Okay. Well, the only thing I got to plug in the formula is the radius. What's the radius? Four. So I plug in four. Step one, identify the shape. Step two, write the formula. Step three, plug in the numbers. Step four, do the calculation. All right, by PEMDAS, what do we do first? Uh, uh, you do the, um, uh, isn't it? Four times four. Okay, it's not four times two? No, it's not. It's not. I shouldn't even say that because some people, that's all they ever hear. It's not four times two. It's the base written twice. It's the base written twice. So it's not eight. Wait, but if you square something, does that mean it's the same as that number? Times itself. Wait, it would be 16. It would be 16. Danny? We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, we're going to talk about doing it by hand first, and we'll talk about calculating. Are you with me, everybody? Yes. Okay. Okay. Four squared is sixteen. Yes. Yes. Uh, is that a fraction? No. So what am I going to use for pi? If this was a fraction, I would use twenty-two over seven for pi. Okay. So I'm going to multiply sixteen times three point one four approximately, and I get an answer. All right. What was Danny's question? Wait. But what was Danny's question? How do we type it into your calculator? All right, here we go. Who's got a dollar calculator? That means that everyone has a pi key somewhere on your calculator. Find it. Okay, find it. Okay, and that's because your pi key is a different color. Do you see that? It's not the key, it's above the key. Do you see that? Or is it a key? 
Okay, find the pi symbol. Do you see it? Is it the key or is it above the key? So when it is above the key, you have to press the second button, which on your calculator is, I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't care so much. Second plus seven, one, two. I'm trying to find her second button. And I'm not finding it. All right, I'm going to have to get back to the next I've never seen that guy before. All right, Did everybody else find it. Now, Dan, you can still type it in by hand. Just do it by pen desk. Do four squared. Most calculators have a square button as well, too. Right? You have this type. This is the most popular one. It's on the right side above my finger. Do you see it? It's got a square button. Now, I'm going to caution you. For those of you doing this, type this whole thing. Don't press enter. Type that whole thing and don't press enter. Yeah. 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 Square button. Your square button is. Oh, I messed up. I'm there. All right. But don't press enter. I know. I did. All right. Now I'm going to show this to everyone's face. Does that look like what's on the board? Yeah. Does that look like what's on the board? Yeah. Does that look like what's on the board? Yeah. I'm going to do this very quickly. You see, it looks exactly like what's on the board. Before you hit enter, before you hit enter, look at your screen. Look at your screen, make sure square button's right here. Look at your screen and make sure that it looks like what you want. So obviously on your paper, you're gonna write pi four squared. On your paper, you're gonna write pi four squared. Okay, it's who said that? What calculator do you have? This is the issue when I say buy this calculator. And then no one listens and they buy their own thing. You have to find the square button. All right. So once that's done, you type it in, it appears on the screen. You simply press the equal or the enter button and the way you go. So therefore, the answer to this one is? If we round to the nearest whole number, that would be? If we round to the nearest whole number, that would be? Guess what? Does yours look like this? No. That's the point that I tried to show you in front of your face. It needs to visually look like that. Okay, let's try it again. What's the first number you see there? Pi, so put in pi. Where, where are you? Yeah, but the key is that key. That's not the pi key. The pi key is, it's blue, right? So we gotta hit the blue button. Blue button now pi, and now we have a problem. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. So. The and the and the real the real reason I was walking around and wanted everyone to look at that is because if your screen doesn't look like this, well, you're not going to get the right answer. Don't hit enter and expect your calculator. Well, maybe the calculator know what's going on. It's got to look like this. Do we get the right answer now? Yes. Round it to the nearest whole number. It would be. It's just, it's going to give you, it's pi. It goes on forever. It never stops, which is why we need to do a little bit of rounding. Don't assume it's wrong. Just round. Nearest whole number? Uh, 21. Okay. Show me your calculator. Okay. Does your screen look like that right there? And what's different? The two is different. You multiply by two, you get the square. And you have to hit the square button. Bring your calculator to class and I'll show you where the square button is. The square button. The square button, yes. Now do it and you get it. All right. Uh, normal issues for the first time we use a calculator, right? Um, but if you don't bring your calculator, then obviously you're going to have the same problems. What's your question? Well, I was going to ask, since it, square is also the, the second exponent, would that mean, is it, would, you, would it be 50.2 on the 
times by itself would be inches times by itself. It's just the word inches because remember, what you're really doing when you take a square and you're calculating the area, give me a number. Five. What I'm really doing is taking five inches and multiply it by five inches. Five times five is, yeah, but I'm still multiplying inches times inches. Well, inches times inches would be inches squared. There's two inches, right? If it was a cube, right? We're not gonna talk about this. I drew that wrong. If there was a cube, there we go, then there would be three of them, and that's why cubes are to the third power. Because it'd be five times five times five. Oh, wait, because you've got your, um, your length times width times height. Oh. All right, but we're not there yet. All right. Is anyone else not getting 50.2? Jake, you got a calculator? Uh, uh, it just depends upon what we're rounding to. So uh, I don't know what the homework says. I want to say it's to near 10, but it could be wrong. Say again. You have to round because pi is a decimal number that goes on forever. So it's not that you even have the option of not rounding. I can't hear if you're talking. Okay, I'm just going to say your calculator, the numbers will go on forever and not stop. You don't have an option of not rounding. Yes? I mean, when you type in your calculator, do the numbers go all the way over? Why not? Show me. Do that calculation right there. Make it look exactly like. Okay, well, we'll talk about your, you're, gonna, you're having a calculator issue. All right, let's do another one. Box two, here we go. Is that a radius or diameter? Radius, Richard. We'll talk about that next. We'll talk about that next. Step one, identify the shape. It's a circle. Step two, you write the formula for area. Step three, you plug in the numbers. Everyone stop what you're doing, look at the board. Hey, on quiz day, if you just write the answer and it's correct, guess what? I'm marking it wrong. Jake, are you listening carefully? Okay, tell me the four steps. Step one. Identify the shape. What's the shape? Step two. You can. It'll be the fourth time you've written it down if you've been paying attention. Okay. I know, but I'm just saying, it, this is not the first time. Step one, you identify the shape. Step two, write the formula. Step three, plug in the numbers. Step four, grab your calculator, do the calculation. So just so, I mean, I've been saying it every single class, if you just put the answer, by the way, the, the answer for this one is 314. I don't care that you got it right. I need to make sure that you know what you're doing, which includes what's the shape, that part's done in your head, but I need to see the formula written down. I need to see the number written in. That allows me to help you when you get it wrong. I'll never get these wrong. Okay, great, we'll see. The kid that identifies the shape incorrectly loses all the points. Hey, it's a circle. Hey, I know the form is A equals power squared. It's written on my resource card. Hey, I know the radius is 10. I plug in a number. And then you fat finger your calculator. I mean, you literally, you're trying to type it in and your finger slips and you type in the wrong thing. Your calculator doesn't love you. It doesn't care. It's going to tell you a number. And you're going to write that number down. And if it's not 314, then you get it wrong. If the only thing on your paper is the wrong number, I can't give you any credit for anything. I don't even know if you know it's a circle. I don't even know if you know the formula for a circle. I, know, I don't even know if you know where the radius is. If you've done all this, step one, circle, step two, formula, step three, I'm gonna give you three out of four points. That means you pass the test without doing anything, without even a calculator. You do need a resource card though, or you need to have the me formulas memorized. One point for doing the calculator. That's why, because you got a calculator in your hand. Anybody that knows what they're doing can get from here to the right answer. 
There's nothing here except typing numbers in a calculator. That's why it's only worth one point. If we're doing it by hand, then all the points would be right here. But it's a calculator test. It's just plugging numbers into a calculator, plugging them in correctly. Jake, we got them now? Okay. Questions on uh, the answer? All right. What's the difference in box three? Box three, Grace, what's the difference? It's a diameter. It's diameter, so what's the radius? It is five. If you can do that, then you can do all these. What will happen is you'll be so confident. You're like, I know what I'm doing, right? And then you'll throw 10 in and you'll get the wrong answer. By the way, the previous one, the radius was 10. We got 314. Anybody want to take a bet that it's half of 314 is your answer? Yes. Let's see. All right. What's the radius here? Grace said it was? Five. Step one, step two, step three. Half of 314 is 157. Did we get 157 as the answer? Calculator people, did we get 157 as the answer? We didn't get 157 as the answer. You want to know why? Because it's not half. What did we get as the answer? 78. 78. Clearly, 78 is not half of 314. How come we didn't get half if the radius was half? Because it's the squaring going on. 10 squared is 100. 5 squared is only 25. You didn't get half of 100. You got a quarter of 100. That's why we're going to get about a quarter of 300. Okay? Not perfectly matched, but close. All right. Who's lost? No one is lost? Is it that easy? Yeah. Okay, Danny, pick one. Uh, left, middle, or right? Everyone else do box four. All right, Danny, you walk me through. You're going to tell me what to write for the middle. Step one. What's the shape of the circle? Okay, step two. By the way, you don't have to write circle, but it's in your head. Step two, uh, it's error is equal to pi r squared for area of a circle. Step three, well, I need to know what the radius is. What's the radius here, Danny? It is four, is what? That's the radius? What's the radius? It is seven. And I need to square it. Hey, everyone look at the board. If you're going to make a mistake, You can put parentheses. Wait, doesn't matter? Nope. Until we get to negative numbers, it doesn't make a difference. You get to negative numbers, it makes a big difference. Does it say find the circumference? Okay. Okay? Grab your calculator. Is that 7 times 2 or 7 times 7? Do it. Or just tell me the answer. Okay, so we get area is equal to 49 times pi. What are we using for pi? So do that. Round and there's whole number. 153 is what she got. If you use the pi key, I think that one goes up by one, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay, so that'd be 154. Okay. So either 153 or 154, depending upon if you use the high key or not the high key. Uh, Danny, did you just do that one by yourself? Okay, so you got it? Okay. Saying do what now? No, it doesn't. That was that one slide. So now are you going to pay attention? So when do you use 22 over 7? When do you use 22 over 7? If the radius is a fraction. Hey, the radius is not 6, it's 2 thirds. Now it makes sense to use 22 over 7. That's not a 3. Yeah, it is. It is a 3. Oh, well, I guess it's just a 3. No, the pen's not right there. Well, all right. 
uh, Danny's reading the instructions and it says for all of them, use 3.14 or 227. So if they give you a regular number, use 3.14 or the pi key, either one's fine. Uh, but if it gives you a fraction, use 22 over seven. Yes. Wait, if you have a calculator and you have a, fra and you have a fraction. Then it doesn't make any sense other than use the pi key. But that's if you have a calculator, yeah. Is 22 divided by seven equal to pi? No, but it's, it goes it? to at least two digits, correct. What is the equation that takes two? Take any circle and divide the uh, circumference by its diameter. You will always get 3.14. So is there a formula for pi? Sure is, it's that one. And it's for any, any circle. I don't care if it's big, small, whatever. Take any circle, divide its circumference by its diameter, and you get to this magic number, 3.14, 15, 926, so forth and so on. All right. Some of it. I don't know. There's a lot of kids that know more than I do on that. There's whole competitions for who can memorize the most digits of pi. I memorized, he memorized so much. Like, he filled up three. Of the three I usually, on uh, next month on pi day, on March uh, 14th, I usually say any kid that can memorize to 100 digits, I'll give you, you know, like 5.6 credits. So, Only five. Usually I have at least one kid every year memorize it. Only All right, check your answers. Danny already told us it was 153 or 154. You got what? Yeah, you got it right. Questions? Danny, you've got that look on your face. You're, you're not getting these numbers? Well, let's do one. You already got this one. You already told me that one. Now let's do another one, Danny. Which one? Left or right? So what's the shape? What's the formula? What's the radius? No, it's 3.1 squared. Grab your calculator. You have to do 3.1 first. 3.1, not times two, but times 3.1, and then multiply by three. All right. If you have any questions, hit me up before the weekend. If not, have a good weekend. Danny, did you get, the, did you get that answer, 30? You got it. You got it. Danny, let me see your calculator. Let me see if I can figure it out now. I just it was trying to take a minute, so second Here, Danny. I Any e learners, Eleanor, are you live? No one is alive today, e learning. All right, if you guys, e learners, have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to send me a chat or email. And you guys have a good weekend.